So, what's happening? Um, Stella's al always been a little bit off and kind of rambunctious and um, she's unpredictable, but since Avery's been here, it's definitely gotten worse. We kind of don't know what to expect. And like I said, she's bitten her, she scratched her. She broke the skin on Avery before? Not on Avery. Um, but no. you, on but her. But us, yeah, me definitely. She's got her eye before. Yeah, she's got uh, me in the eyelid. My thought is that it's just the general state of energy that a 13-month-old child brings to the table. If that cat's energy is not drained off of them every single day, that static builds, and then you've got the unpredictable motions and, and behaviors of a child. And that, I think, is that combustible combination. I'm just watching Stella's tail. It's always going. Always? Always. Most of the time. Even when she's like laying and she seems to be resting, like it seems to be going. We used to joke that she like sleeps with one eye open. She's always kind of on guard. Stella is a classic tail talker. When she's not feeling altogether grounded, that tail is not grounded. First it starts to flick, then it starts to whip, then it starts to wag. She's letting you know I am just feeling like I'm crawling out of my skin a little. Just by watching Avery circle around Stella, I can see that they've got a history. Seeing Stella sitting on this table and seeing Avery eye level to the cat sitting in her little chair, it's a really tense situation. Hey, hey. Ah. Come over here. Okay, so that, that. Come over here. Didn't take much. Yeah, no, it doesn't. You look at her again <laughs> and she's like, nah. She's like, no, I like but Stella. But she's very persistent and she loves her cat. Avery is suddenly hit with the soft paw, just a little bat like that, just a way of saying, you might want to get out of my face. Expecting Avery to understand, get out of my face and go take a seat someplace else is unreasonable. Now, as, as this one gets a lot more active, I, I notice it being mirrored by Stella. Stella starts getting ramped up as well. Now I you know ready you're for getting tired. Is yeah. this what happens before nap time is yeah. that she starts getting... Yeah. I've gotten all the information that I can get right now from Stella and Avery's interactions. Now we can get Avery down for the count for a minute so that I can really spend a little more time with Stella. Stella! The best way that I can challenge Stella to see if her behavior is predictable or not is to bring out a toy and to bring out my hands. If she chooses my body parts over the toy, well, that's bad for everybody, including me. What I'm seeing is that she's looking for the toy. She's going around looking to see where that toy went. She doesn't want my hands. What? And I'm telling you, I am going to town right now. I am rubbing that cat's belly. I am picking her up, putting her down, juggling her basically. And she continually wants to remove herself from the situation. What finally sets off Stella is not me petting her, over petting, over stimulating. It's when I remove all of that attention and just sit in stillness. Oh. Now she's all wound up and she doesn't have an outlet and that's when she goes for me. Now we got it going. Yeah? Okay. I know you're angry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to anger you, but if that's as bad as it gets. I've got all the information I need from Stella and I'm actually really excited right now because I feel like I could give these parents tools that will save the relationship between their child and their cat and save this cat from hitting the bricks. This is your cat's favorite thing ever. Okay. So that's cool. Okay. I mean, I I would, literally what I was doing was playing with her, then I'd put it in my back pocket and present my hands just like she would. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I don't want that, I want the toy. Okay. Realizing that with cats, they are built for speed and not distance. So when they play, it's like, go, 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 go. So that's the boil. Then they're just gonna, this one is just gonna go. Okay. But she's only gonna do that for about a minute, that's the simmer. Then you're gonna go at it again. Every time you do it, she's gonna get more and more truly tired. And then at that point, you feed a meal, done. Okay. So your last assignment, need to catify this okay. world in a big way. Because okay. what happened today was thoroughly predictable, right. right? It's their eye to eye, yeah. which is already a little bit offensive to the cat. We give Stella some vertical space here. Mm -hmm. Stella could be up on a perch somewhere, looking down, watching, as Avery does these unpredictable movements, and this one owns the floor. Right. And the four-legged owns the sky. Yeah. Okay. Even though I'm ditching a lot of work on you guys, the payoff is so huge, that's why I'm excited right yeah. now. Oh, because yeah. I really think that you're set up to do a really cool thing right now. Hi. Hey, good morning. <laughs> now hopefully with the homework that I gave these guys, they should have been creating lanes of traffic and little bubbles for the two to operate in without actually coming together. Hopefully that's what I'm gonna see. I know that you guys have been up to a lot, 
over the past couple of weeks. When Avery um, is, is, is playing loud, we notice signs of Stella, her tail moving back and forth rapidly. We're, we are getting better at recognizing mm -hmm. it, I think. Okay, Avery and Stella were kind of getting into each other's space. Uh, Stella was trying to get in Avery's little chair that she's sitting in. I'm gonna try to get her up in her own space up here. She chooses, as she's chosen today twice now, to remove herself rather than to engage. Yeah. Eric and Morgan have done brilliant work on really being able to predict Stella's behavior through her body language. She's a very clear communicator. They know to back off at a certain point to separate the two of them before bad things happen. Moving on. So I'm going to play with Stella. Woo! <laughs> there she goes. Having a routine is helping. I think she likes that. She's loving all of her goodies that we've gotten yes, for yes. her. Yes, yes. Everything's going really well up to this point. I mean, everything that I've heard, everything that I've seen on homework, but I want to see a little bit more. Time to look at the catification. Nothing like a handyman. <laughs> Trying to there make, we go. That's it. Make our home more Stella friendly. Eric is just walking around, putting up shelves and everything. He's did an amazing job. Now, let's get up. I'm a little worried about this thing. Okay. We have a problem here where Cat Superhighway meets human lane of traffic. Given Avery this mm -hmm. as the Kidzilla zone, man. She can do whatever she wants down here, right? <laughs> yes. My fear is, as Kidzilla comes through here, swipe. Okay. And we don't have a decent on-ramp here. Mm -hmm. You see where I might be going? And that there? Yep. Okay. okay. If it lines up the way I think it's going to, she's like out of the lane of traffic. Okay. okay. Let's do it. Okay. Sounds I'm gonna help you guys out. All we gotta do is take the cat tree from where it is for Stella, and in the meantime, put the bookcase over where the cat tree was, and that's a perfect off-ramp into the kitchen. Wow. Hey. Okay. That's fairly perfect. Now this room has the feeling of flow that we always look for from catification. I think we're done here. I think that we've got an amazing beginning. Absolutely. And I think that that's really all I could hope to give you guys is a beginning, you know, like they say in Casablanca, the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> uh, you guys. Yes, Thank you too. Thank you You've so been much. Absolutely wonderful. I feel like I need to give you a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely.